Well, what a week it has been in our wonderful spinning globe. Wins on all fronts against the ever-decreasing numbers of flurfs. And today, I'm going to introduce you to one special flurf. Someone who has been at the forefront of this argument for many years. In fact, he was the very first flurf that I ever spoke to. And was also the very first flurf that I met in person. Now, I understand that many of you may have heard of Sleeping Warrior. But maybe many of you don't know of all the many achievements that he made inside the community. I will attempt today to put that right with a little delve into the past and to highlight just a few of his most explosive revelations. But before we get there, I do want to make a massive shout out today to my patrons. And I'm going to shout out Nathaniel Muller, Mr. Steve, Dan Suhena, Dr. Logic, Simon D., Mitt Velkes, Howard Moore, and Pros. Thank you so, so much for being awesome patrons of mine. I also want to shout out my channel members too. So we have Timo Lynch, Joshua Corcoran, Marek Zajak, Valdemir S., Marcelo Sasso, ProXE, Richard McLeod, Some Old Dude, Tati Bogle, EG22 Twagon, <laughs> Hungry Ghost, Anti Hirvansalo, WS, Vol, and Sisyphus. I would also like to thank Mike, who made a PayPal donation to me as well. So thank you very much. He actually gave me a PayPal donation, which was to cover the five pounds that my father owed me from way back when in one of my older videos that I talked about what happened there. And I also want to say thank you for the beers that I got with the additional funds that you sent me. So thank you very much for the PayPal support too. Now on with the show, let's get started. Here we have to go all the way back to March 2016, when Riley made a claim of seeing Blackpool Tower from this spot at Hoy Lake. Unfortunately, there is a gigantic hill in the foreground called Formby Beach. He claimed that Google Earth was wrong because a direct line of sight to Blackpool Tower should not have that land in the way. And this was true. The land should not have been in the way, except he never took the images from where he said he did. And as far as I know, even to this very day, he claims that he still took the images from this spot, which we all know he did not. But in this video, he showed images of Blackpool Tower, which he claimed that he had filmed from Hoy Lake, UK. Now I need to be very clear that there was never any question about the visibility of Blackpool Tower from Hoy Lake. According to the mathematical calculations for a globe Earth, it certainly should be visible from Hoy Lake. But the contention was that Anthony Riley insisted that he had filmed Blackpool Tower over an outcrop of land called Formby Beach when it should be visible over the sea and he asserted that Google Earth and Google Maps were wrong. And of course this is all part of the Globe Earth conspiracy in Anthony's mind. His escapades continued. He went to St Bees and claimed to have filmed the Isle of Man from an elevation of 30 feet. Had this been true and Flat Earthers, including myself, bought into this claim, then it would appear that the globe had a lot of explaining to do. The debate raged about what could and what could not be seen, and all the time the globe believers were saying he was not at 30 feet, he was at much higher. Wild claims were made. At one point, Riley even said that he could see Ireland in the image and some chimney stacks some 95 miles away. He also claimed to be seen right down to the beach, a claim later thoroughly debunked by at least a dozen Globe Earth content creators. A tuft of trees was also a source of great distress to Sleeping Warrior back then, because this tuft of trees was used to establish a line of sight to locations different from what he had claimed. Even now, simply saying the phrase, tuft of trees to Sleeping Warrior, will make him contort his face wriggle and squirm because this phrase followed him for the next year and more. However, time ticked on and after many months the argument was settled. Sleeping Warrior had lied 
to the entire community. And in fact, his elevation was not 30 feet, as he claimed, but a monumental 130 feet. When this information became public, Sleeping Warrior blamed Google Earth for the error. I mean, it was just simply impossible for him to have known that he was at the height of a 13-storey building. Now, with this new information, the observation became a globe Earth proof. But predictably, Sleeping Warrior wriggled off the hook and the flurfs all fell for his sob story yet again. Another time, he once claimed that eclipses happen every month and flashed £1,000 around willing to bet anyone that he was right about it. Mark Taylor took up the challenge and waved a £1,000 right back at him, only for Sleeping Warrior to welch on the bet and delete his entire YouTube channel. But why would he delete his channel, you may ask? Well, quite clearly, we do not observe eclipses on the Earth every month. Sleeping Warrior's argument was that he actually meant that the moon passes between the sun and the earth every month. And so there is a shadow cast. And even if it does not hit the earth, it is still an eclipse. If he wasn't so stupid, I believe by now he would have been institutionalized. A solar eclipse will happen every single month. And why? Because the, it takes 27 days, 27 point something days for the moon to orbit the earth. So at some point it's going to cross the sun. And it does it every single month. Now, I have no explanation for why it takes every hundred years for America to get one, because the law of probability dictates that it should be every few years, but we're being told it's once every hundred years. So there is a solar eclipse every day, uh, every month. The only problem is we don't see it because it's usually over the water. So you can bet me a thousand pound because you have to come up with the reason for why it's not when the, when the, when the moon orbits the Earth once every month, you burke. I bet you a thousand pound solar eclipses happen every single month. The issue is we never see them because they're normally over the earth, uh, oh, normally over the water. There's the thousand pound, Matt Taylor. Put your money where your mouth is or shut up because you don't know what you're talking about. But let that me just be clear on the confidence. It's based on Mark Taylor saying that solar eclipses do not happen every month. Every single month they happen because it's orbiting the earth. Anthony, you claim that eclipses happen every month, yeah? Correct. Well, what what do they happen every month, Anthony? Do we know what an eclipse is before we start? Let's define yeah, a solar what... eclipse. Yeah, do, let's define it. What happens with a solar eclipse? Yeah, the moon travels in front of the sun. Correct. Yeah. And the reason why that happens is because of it going around the Earth once every twenty-seven point summit days, right? Yeah. Now, the reason why you're going to argue that it doesn't happen is because of the ecliptic plane of five percent tilt. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Does the moon still pass in front of the sun? No. Yeah, it does. It just casts a shadow. That's no, it doesn't, Anthony. It goes yes, it above does. and below, above and below. He's fucked off. Look, he can't fucking Google and fucking stay in a hangout at the same time. So now everyone can see the fat fucks run away. He don't want to pay me my thousand pound. Pay the of thousand pounds, you fucking lying prick. No, the minute that sun goes between uh, the moon goes oh, between look, the sun. Oh, here we go. Oh, I'm not going to pay you there because I'm a fucking idiot. I go online and talk bullshit, and then when I get cold on my bullshit, I don't even need to demonstrate it. It's, it, it, it's totally and utterly um, intuitive because link it can happen one on one fucking eclipse. Link me one eclipse, Anthony. That's happened, happened in recent memory. That no one has seen. Well, I'm going to have to come back to you in 10 minutes when I find one. It's not something I can what, So you still can't hang find on, one? On. So you just. Well, how come I can find thousands that hang on. Daddy B's found, found them on Google? Hang that on. Says we don't get one every month, Anthony. Every month, the moon goes around the Earth. Just over 27 point whatever days it is. The 28 days, there you go. So every time it gets back to that same point at the beginning of every month, it passes between the sun and the Earth. No. Nope. The, the only difference is. Nope. Yeah, the only difference no, the moon this video, travels... this video has got fuck all to do with solar eclipses. You can nope. you can clearly see it says the moon's orbit around the earth. It's got yeah. fuck all to do with solar eclipses. You're a fucking right. idiot, Riley. No, because the point is it takes twenty. You're a fucking idiot and you're also a dishonest idiot now because the now you're fucking you making bollocks passes... up not to pay the thousand pound. What a all is it is that? the shadow around the earth. But but well, do you know what it's Still an eclipse though, because it passes between the sun and, and the this is what that well, this is what it's going to that's this is what the bait's got, so I don't want involved in it, but this is what the bait's going to go down, uh, going to end up going down to is uh, the definitions.
You can't link one article. You can't link one article that says we get one every month. All you've done is linked a video that talks about the orbit of the moon. I mean, how stupid are you, Anthony? Well, You're that fucking stupid that you're on YouTube probably. now saying that, that everyone's definition of a solar eclipse is wrong and you're right. But no. you, can't, you can't link one article that backs what you're saying up. We get it all the time. It's just oh, it's all the, the time now. So it's not just once a month, it's all the time now. So yeah. everyone in chat now, it's gone from we get it once a month to all the time now. Yeah, it's frequently, but it's where the shadow gets cast and that's the only variation. Just read out why the, the explanation tells us why we don't get an eclipse every month. A, lo a lunar eclipse occurs when the moon. No, not a lunar eclipse. It's a solar eclipse. Yes, yeah, yeah, it goes on to oh, uh, go on it on. Says a solar eclipse occurs when the moon's sh shadow falls on the Earth. They do not happen every month because the Earth's orbit around the sun is not in the same plane as the moon's orbit around the Earth. Yes. Thank you, Jamie. Yes. So there you go. Jamie's yeah, just read out an article that says we do not get a, a solar eclipse every because month. Because of the tilt of the, the tilt of the moon. I agree. We're, we agree at that so, point. So you owe me a thousand pounds then? No, because the sun still... What do you mean, no? You said we get a solar eclipse every month, Jamie. He's just read out, uh, uh, Anthony. He's just read out that we don't. So how come you don't owe me a thousand pounds then? Because the sun, the moon still passes in front of the sun. Just oh, a shadow gets cast off. elsewhere. You fucking dishonest. It's still cunt. an eclipse. What you fucking bet was that a solar eclipse doesn't uh, happens every month, and I it's said it's still done. an eclipse. Jamie's just read out the reason we don't get one every fucking month, and you're the, lying. The, the moon passes in front of the sun. Ah, uh, you're a fucking dishonest you get it every prick, single Riley. month. What a fucking dishonest you are, Riley. Yeah, well, everyone so can fucking can see now that you're you're not a man of your word. You're a dishonest little prick. We bet a thousand pounds. I was prepared to fucking pay that into your account today, right now. Link me one article. You can't. Show I me the fucking, thousand pounds. Jamie's, Jamie's fucking linked it. Jamie's linked it. And uh, he's read it out while we don't get one every month. And then you've backed down on your bet. So everyone Dude. can see now that Dude. fucking Anthony Riley is a dishonest fat prick. I bet you a thousand pound solar eclipses happen every single month. The issue is we never see them because they're normally over the earth. Uh, oh, normally over the water. After a short stay of absence, the blundering idiot returned with new vigour and was determined to make up for his past errors by reclaiming the number one spot as best flat earth researcher in existence. He immediately opened a new channel and got straight back into debating. He was discussing distances to Polaris and was trying to do some trigonometry. However, his lack of comprehension soon became apparent to the far cleverer globe earther he was debating and to make the point sleeping warrior was asked to do a very basic question about angles he was tasked with figuring out what the internal angle was on an equilateral triangle anthony if a triangle has the sides one and one do you know what the angles of the triangle are which kind of triangle are you on about are you on about like a right angle triangle the triangle has sides one, one, and one. Do you know what the angles are? Um, the angles would be... Well, it would be an equilateral triangle, wouldn't it? Right, so what are the angles? <clears throat> now, I'm going to ask this again. If you have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one, what are the angles? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a triangle calculator. Let's do this again. Anthony, a triangle has sides one, one, and one. What are the angles? Well, the, the one I'm using, isn't, it's not giving me any when I do it. So either this, this calculator is wrong or you're wrong. We have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one. What are the angles? Yeah, so that's an equilateral triangle, right? Right, so what are the angles? Does that work on a right-angle triangle? The sides are one, one, and one. What are the yeah. angles? When is that ever used in astronomical calculations for tr measuring trig? I'm not going to tell you that until you answer my question. The triangle it's relevant, decides... It's not relevant. We use okay. right-angle triangles to calculate the distance of things, correct? We don't even need to use right-angle triangles. It only, what you're describing only works with an equilateral... Anthony, the fact that you can't answer these simple math questions crap you is, is ridiculous. Why can't you just apply it to right-angle triangles? Fine, three, four, five, that's a red angle.
How do you know it's a right angle triangle? Because three, four, five triangles are right angle. So because it physically is. There's no right. other. There's no what? other triangle it can be. All right. Well, I don't know that's true. So I want to test it. How do I test it? In November 2019, he made his next huge claim. He said his dog had Westy lung, an incurable disease which would kill his dog. He contacted the equally insane Adam Meakin, a UK pharmacist who also happens to be a flat earther. Adam concocted out of his arse a treatment using CBD oil. Basically, they were going to stuff the dog full of this stuff and hoped it worked. Adam supplied the medication and the poor dog was force fed this in order to save his life. Then a miracle happened. His dog lived and not only lived, but made a full recovery. In just a few months, a quack chemist, sleeping warrior and his dog had defied all known science by curing his dog of Westy lung. What a beautiful story. However, what he has not told the community is that his dog was actually misdiagnosed and never had Westy lung at all. It had all been, in fact, a big mistake. Having bumped into his ex, who was clearly distraught at the news of Mickey and his illness, Sleeping Warrior fessed up and conceded it had been a mistake, that his dog was now just fine. His video on this miracle cure for Westy lung is still out there though. Link is in the description, but sadly there has been no admittance that the drugging of his dog for months had all been in vain because he had never had that condition in the first place. The Foucault Pendulum was his next target. This time he found someone with the surname Foucault and made a video about him. He exposed this guy, claiming that even in his wiki page there was no reference to the Foucault Pendulum experiment. Sleeping Warrior claimed victory, except, as most of you probably know where this is going by now, he was in fact completely wrong yet again. The guy he exposed was a Paul Michel Foucault, yet the guy who fought up and performed the pendulum test was in fact Leon Foucault, who died over a century before. Paul Michel Foucault, the guy we all know for the pendulum effect. Apparently it shows the rotation of the earth. What do we know about Foucault? Not that much really. French, pendulums, that's about it. That's all we know about him. This is the guy. He died in 1988. Uh, 1984, aged 57. Does anybody know what he died of? I didn't know what he died of. Presumably old age. There's not that much in it, but for the fact that he was gay, openly gay, he died of HIV, and that's about as much as you can tell. Everything else in here is generally not that, you know, not that interesting. There's not that much in it. One thing I want to show you is that if you do a control and F in here and type in pendulum, no mention of the pendulum. Foucault's pendulum supposed to show the rotation of the Earth. Wouldn't you think that if that was true, it would at least get a mention in his Wikipedia page. Interesting that it's not even mentioned. And uh, you guys think that this thing proves that the Earth rotates? Really? Hmm. Next, he did a live stream. On a live stream. When he pissed in a glass under the table. He had been in discussions with Pete Shea and Patricia Steer on the huge benefits of drinking your own piss. And with it getting late, he knew he had to put aside his morning drinkies. He would often do this in his caravan too up at St. B's. The fridge was full of his urine. He once offered it to me, which I politely declined. Ew! He doesn't have to show you the code. He just brings you before the judge, and the judge has to show you the code. Correct. Yeah, well, that's not what happened, though, is it? Well, I well, don't, no, but the I... point is... Over the past few years, him and his dictionary have taken many people to court in the vain hope that this so-called qualified solicitor could win a court case. Sadly, after 10 attempts, him and his dictionary have been kicked in the gangoolies and lost every single time. One time the judge scolded him so badly for bringing a dictionary to his courtroom, he made Sleepy cry like a baby girl. Another time, Sleepy was scolded when he in the court started playing the Flat Earth debates, and Nathan Oakley's booming voice telling someone to shut the fuck up reverberated around the sacred walls of the court. The judge was none too impressed and sent Sleepy to bed without his evening snack. Sleepy claims there is no downward bias, much to the dismay of every single person with their feet on the floor right now. 
He has gone to great lengths to try and prove this. He once pretended to be a scientist holding an egg. Bob Nodell, aka Superfleurf, really isn't impressed with Sleeping Warrior on this subject, often calling him a complete clown or moron. And who am I to disagree? 18 months ago, I made this video. And in this video, I demonstrated that if I manipulated the medium, an object could be accelerated without any magical forces. How do I know it wasn't magical? Because I caused it. It's part of scientific method. This video is going to be a challenge to Bob Nodell from Globebusters to support his nonsense. And it's also going to serve as a way of weeding out fake science from, uh, from actual science, otherwise known as pseudoscience. This is how you work out bullshit from, from science. You just apply scientific method. Let's have a little listen to what I said back 18 months ago. Just a minute or so. You'll notice that I identify the scientific process where we go through and we itemize all the various components to a scientific test. I could measure the density of a medium, in this case water, and I can make this egg move all by itself with just a little bit of salt. So now we get to the point where we can all agree, because we can demonstrate that things move up as well as down. There isn't a downward bias. Sleeping Warrior brought out his next howler when he brought a letter to the Flat Earth Debate Show. This letter was supposedly between Bern University and Albert Einstein. It read, Overall, we find your assumptions to be more artistic than actual physics. Nathan Oakley and Sleeping Warrior masturbated over this for several shows without ever realizing that, with just a 30 second Google, they could have found out that it was a well-known fake. Further. I'll do. Okay. All right, so this is, this is University of Bern, dated 1907, June 1907. Dear Mr. Albert Einstein, your application for the doctorate has not been successful at this time, and as such, you are not eligible for the position of associate professor. Now, this is the most important bit. Whilst you posed an interesting theory in your article published an Alan de Physique, we feel that your conclusion about the nature of light and the fundamental connection between space and time are somewhat radical. Overall, we find your assumption to be more artistic than actual physics. Now, when I first read this back in the day, a couple of years ago, it, it, I read it as, oh, we got rejected first time round and I didn't think any more of it. But the fact that, that, that now when I look at this with a bit further, a bit more down the uh, experience line, I look at it and I think, so they've actually rejected it because it wasn't actual physics. They must be referencing scientific method when they're referencing actual physics. And to re uh, reject it on the grounds of artistic, they're actually referencing pseudoscience. So I guess what they're doing here, the way I interpret this, is that they're being polite and professional and saying, you're a pseudoscientist. Flat Earth research like this is commonplace though, which probably explains why Sleeping Warrior was nominated on four successive years for the DFOTY Awards by the Globe community. If you're not sure exactly what the DFOTY Awards means, I'll tell you now. Dumb fuck of the year. He finally won it two years ago, but is now barred from re-entering because once you have won, you can't be renominated. So he's currently working with Rachie 0000 to try and make sure she wins the award this year. Sleeping Warrior did a massive campaign that the entire community was aware of, where he had his Fleur friends cough up a few thousand pounds to put him through university to try and slip Flat Earth into the schools. He made very bold claims and was going to change everything very very big and important news about six months ago Anthony was looking into getting some sort of information regarding to the heliocentric deception academically published peer-reviewed something that's official and in order to do this he's had to jump through a few hoops and ultimately it's going to cost quite a substantial amount of money that's something else I'll come on to later we will be putting our hand out cap in hand going to the audience and saying this needs funding um, so that will also follow. But that's the boring bit. The exciting bit is the task at hand. So I'm going to pass over to Anthony. So hopefully going to give the audience a bit of detail about exactly what this is. 
I was looking at different research, uh, different courses, different research courses at um, higher level, um, and different universities do do different things. And I found one that does what I want. Um, and my intention is to try and get a pro flat earth dissertation written that is peer reviewed by my peers who are all solicitors or barristers in, in the profession and basically criticize or challenge the law, the UK domestic law on who is accountable for the national curriculum. I want to criticize the, the, the people that are in the education system on facts that we can prove are at least debatable in terms of the evidence because th they, they would have to prove the 93 million mile sun, for example, if they were going to show that their statements that we were being taught were actually true. And I don't know whether they can. Now, the risk with it, of course, is that it would be seen as being anti-establishment or what, some unethical or whatever. There is a real risk that they may not actually accept it as, um, a, as a submission because of whatever reason they deem suitable ethically, morally. Uh, it could even class as terrorist, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what the position would actually be. We should be able to prove these things. It shouldn't be the case that I have to sit here week after week after week asking about the 93 million mile sun, because if the whole body of science is supporting this, where is it? Here is his receipt, which he claims he handed in his thesis, except this never happened. I can personally attest by word of mouth from someone very close to him that he never submitted it at all. This is backed up by his own admission that the receipt was bogus. I also wish to state for the record that Riley told me that when he went back to the same university that he completed his honours degree in, he told me that he had the same student number and that his number was just two digits long, as he was one of the very first students there. He said they issued him with the same number again. This again does not match the receipt. But this revelation has already been admitted by Sleeping Warrior, who took £2,335 off the community including myself for this course which begs the question why did he post a fraudulent receipt on his gofundme and why has he never told the community what happened to his thesis and his course did he even enroll on the course if you want a complete breakdown of this story i have included two videos for your enjoyment in the description next the flat earth scientist sleeping warrior tells everybody Air has no weight. Sleeping Warrior, atmospheric pressure, noun. The pressure exerted by the weight of the atmosphere, which at sea level has a mean value of blah. Where does that weight come from? Well, that is the reason why I'm doing this video. Weigh a balloon, inflate it, weigh it again, it'll be heavier. Do you now accept air has weight? Uh, no. Do you now accept air has weight? Uh, no. Do you now accept Ur uh, has weight? Uh, no. Do you now accept Ur uh, has weight? Uh, no. But it hasn't got any weight. Don't let them claim atmospheric pressure. Laugh at them and tell them it hasn't got any intermolecular bonds, you moron. Explain that, you dozy bastard. In Sleeping Warrior's next bold claim, he says that time is not an independent variable. Independent variable, thought.com. Tom Hull, uh, Helmstein, uh, I believe he's a PhD, I think. Um, independent variable is the variable that's changed or controlled in a scientific experiment to see its effects on the dependent variable. Can't manipulate time. Uh, 
Now, explorable.com, independent variable is what change in order to provide a result. Again, you can't change time. If this, if, it, if they were too complex for you, this is a GCSE standard level uh, factor or a, a GCSE citation. Um, time is at the bottom here. This is the cause. The independent variable is also controlled by you. You have to control your independent variable. That's your cause and effect, right? Your independent variable is your cause. Time can't ever be one or the other. <laughs> University at Bloomington. Independent variables are felt to cause some change in the dependent variable. They are manipulated by the researcher. Again, you've got to manipulate your presumed cause. So time can't be an independent variable. It can't be. It's it's a scalar. It's a measurement uh, measuring device. <laughs> Sciencing.com. Uh, independent variable is the variable that the scientist changes during the experiment. It's the independent variable. Think of the experiment as a cause and effect exercise. So the perfect cup of tea is not a cause and effect exercise. It is what you think or you perceive to be the perfect cup of tea. But it isn't a cause or an effect. So the independent variable isn't time. So Now we have Riley back with another corker, and he is now claiming an observation taken by P900 Coolpix is the best flat earth proof that he has ever seen. Could this be more derp? He yet again claims we can see right down to the beach and that it crushes the globe. You may have seen my analysis on this already, however, I just want to say Tuft of Trees is back. His nemesis has returned. Tuft of Trees killed off his first claims at the Isle of Man, and has done so again. Plus, just for the lols, there is no beach on the line of sight. You really couldn't make this up. Sleeping Warrior, aka Anthony Riley, has been at the forefront of the Flat Earth Research community for over six years now, and his fame, or infamy, continues to grow. He is back with yet another YouTube channel, where he butchered an attempt to build a working Cavendish experiment, done another video exposing how utterly wrong he is about angular sizes, rambles about science is all wrong and we should believe him and Quantum Eraser as they know it all, claims Einstein and Newton were wrong and his experiment debunks them, has the gall to claim a globe Earth proponent is the most dishonest, and for perhaps the 500th time now, has released another observation that proves the globe and we're seeing right the way down to the beach oh yes we are it's just a little bit squashed we know it's not the curvature of earth because if it was the curvature of earth the water line would have to obscure it wouldn't it there'd have to be a wall of water blocking the amount of curvature why do we see it why is it compressed at the bottom and why is this footage not converting every single ball earther into a flat earther. What nonsense are you going to come back with guys? The elevation of this land identified as number three can be replicated on Google Earth very easily and you can all do it. You don't even need the geometry of the earth to work it out. You can see how high we can see. You can see that it's on the coast. You can see that it's down to the beach. Welcome to flat earth. This is probably the best flat earth proof that I have ever seen. He still has a long way to go to reclaim those 6,000 subscribers he once had. Some bought using QQ Tube. Wink wink Tony, we know. 
but he resides comfortably on 462 as we speak. A healthy amount when you aren't buying subs. But that is all we have for you today. And I'll see you all in the next one.